Welcome to the HTMD user event 2023. This is the first event that we are doing as part of HTMD, as Anup sir just said right now. And uh, this will be the first session for this event uh, that both me and Anup sir is going to present to you. So, Anup sir, any introduction from yourself, or it, it's okay that we go directly into the session? Yeah. Probably it's better to uh, go directly yeah, to the session. <laughs> yeah, OK. So this first session is all about the new store experience that Microsoft uh, is providing or has uh, brought forward with Windows 11. And that is uh, typically why I have titled this session as Life Beyond Microsoft Store for Business and uh, getting to know the new Microsoft Store that is powered by the Wingate or the Windows Package Manager. Uh, typically, uh, in the in the old uh, version of Windows, even though the laptop depicts a Windows 11 uh, there, so if a user requests an application, then the user would uh, go to the laptop and then open the store, and from within the store, uh, they would initiate a download uh, and install of applications. This was the old mechanism of getting an app. This this scenario is excluding Intune or any kind of management. Just basically, if you want to get uh, get an app on your device uh, as an end user, then this would be the typical flow. But uh, the problem with this uh, old store was that because Microsoft, uh, 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 because Microsoft. Uh, push to have only the universal Windows platform apps and the progressive web apps in the store. The Windows Store did not contain any of the useful traditional Win32 applications. So <clears throat> the store was mainly for applications which were not required that much, and it was also very poorly maintained. So now what Microsoft has done is uh, they have rebuilt the store entirely from the scratch based on the Windows Package Manager. Uh, if if uh, this Package Manager concept is something uh, uh, that was already existing with uh, the Linux operating system for long, and if you know a Package Manager is something that is used uh, by end users or developers to do discovery search, install, uninstall, manage applications on the operating system. So now what it looks like is if if the user requires an application, then there is this will get command line interface or CLI that acts as the front end to the Windows Packet Manager service on top of which the new store experience is built on and the applications that we can now request comes from the Winget repository that is managed by uh, Microsoft and from there we can install the applications. Now the benefit of this is that the Winget repository has a mirror link to the existing store applications. So the applications like the UWP, PWA applications that were already available with the Microsoft Store are also available with Winget. But the main benefit is that this Winget repository is also made uh, available to the independent software vendors, so they can also submit their own applications or even they can host their own applications and submit the app manifest file to the Winget repository. There's a vetting process by Microsoft. Uh, if, if the applications get approved, they get listed in the repository and then the user can get those applications installed on their device using just a command line. The benefit is that because we now get a command line interface, so we also get the ability to do scripting and things like that with this. So we can basically prepare a script, uh, Winget script to install, uninstall, or update applications on an end user's device. Uh, the limitations uh, currently that are there with this new setup is that uh, paid licenses or Applications that request consent, end user consent, are currently not available from this mechanism, but they will be there down the road. And also, 
private repository is something that is not currently uh, available, but it will be available down the roadmap. So private repository then uh, it, it helps organizations having in-house applications to not to repackage those applications, but just have the exe source file held in a or held in their own in-house server and add that link to the repository so that the software can be uh, provided to the end user devices. The benefit again is that now along with PW and UWP apps, you also get uh, EXC applications, MSIEX, AppX applications from the Winget. So the requirement to do app packaging is something that is not required anymore. So if more are when there are many partners already onboarded with this Winget, uh, Winget rep, uh, repository, like uh, Adobe is one, uh, there's uh, I, I think Salesforce app and all those are also onboarded. Uh, but as more and more uh, uh, independent software vendors gets added, then uh, uh, the, the the current way that we do, like we convert the .exs to our .intune file with the Win32 repackaging and then upload it to Intune, then that process will not be required. Currently, like for the timing, it will still be required for the now Zelobi apps. That is for sure. So I will hand it over to Anup sir to do a short demo on this Winget thing. Yep, sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, that diagram, and uh, that is that is very clear, and uh, that is typical joy. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so um, let's let me share my screen and um, try to show some windows 11 device and i'm just um windows as joy mentioned the windows with with all the windows 11 devices um or our operating system we are getting winget as a as a, as a default application and uh, this is applicable for i think latest versions of uh, windows 10 as well okay so i'm just going to type winget um okay and um, see what is what is coming up over here. So if I if I type Winget, it says uh, okay, it is this is Windows Package Manager Preview version, and uh, Winget is the command line tool, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these are the parameters or commands available. Okay, and uh, these are the options available, etc. Right. So for example, if if you want to if you want to kind of check what does the version of the Winget, right? You can say uh, info. Uh, winget hyphen hyphen info and that will that will provide you the version details of the of the winget okay and then the interesting part is uh, this is uh, this utility we can use it uh, with um, several uh, commands so for example one of the favorite thing for me is the search Right. If I want to search, um, then Winget uh, space search, and then, um, okay. Let's let me let me use what's. Uh, I don't know. I'm spelling it correctly. Uh, I'm typing it. Okay. Okay. So now uh, you can see the WhatsApp. Uh, we what are the what are the uh, WhatsApp application versions available in the in the Winget store as well as in Microsoft Store. So there are so as uh, Joy mentioned, there are two source locations, right? One is the source, and the, that is the mirror link of Microsoft Store, and that is that is what you can see over here. Okay. So this this particular WhatsApp version is is coming from the source. MS store Microsoft uh, store and this is the one uh, directly coming from the Winget and you can see the difference between the ID also right for example all the store applications has this standard ID thing and um, for Winget application oh, okay not the correct time <laughs> okay uh, so uh, winget application id is this one actually so for example if you want to if you want to search something uh, something complex or uh, not complex maybe uh, winget um search i don't know maybe acrobat uh, adobe adobe acrobat 
So you can you can use the um, codes and you can say, okay, uh, what are the Adobe Acrobat reader versions available? You can see, okay, there's one in MS uh, MS Store and there are there are two others in Wingate. So from here, you can kind of take a decision, okay, which one you want to install or how you want to install, etc. So for example, if you want to install uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader, uh, then there are different options to install it, right? Um, Winget install is the command, uh, command, and there is there are parameters like uh, silent install, and uh, you using the ID, you can install it, right? Uh, you you don't need to use ID always, ID uh, parameter always, but it is better to use that sometimes to avoid avoid confusions, etc. OK, so I'm not going to install that, but there are there are a lot of other other command line parameter options available in Winget as well. Also, we have a we have a third party. I, I don't think this is this. This is Microsoft's uh, website, but the, the this this website also can uh, help you with some of the some of the details, like, for example, if I want to check what's what's up what's up okay what's up application available in winget you can see uh, there are different what's up versions available in winget um, and you can use uh, you can check the details if you click on that search results okay and you can see over here you can see the command line parameter uh, which you can use to install the application so for example you know, copy you can copy it and you can say okay i want to install it maybe it will it will let you let me install it okay so it is downloading the application whatsapp application from uh, this repository okay and and it is it is getting installed on my device okay so so this is this is one uh, one of the useful website where you can where you can kind of go and search for applications but this is not perfect i would say uh, because the search options over here is not always perfect it won't um, <laughs> we we cannot kind of fine tune or we cannot do some kind of advanced searches uh, with this website yet but probably we will reach there um, have one um, probably in in coming days okay uh, why why i'm saying it is it is not up to the mark or advanced search features are not available because i'm comparing it with uh, the chocolatey uh, software packages or applications available uh, available for windows right there are a lot of folks uh, from the server management side uh, uses chocolatey for installation of application onto the servers etc cetera, etc cetera. so they have a very standard um, standard a uh, package manager all right a chocolatey package manager system and they have a they have a very useful website and you can see over here uh, the details for each application is very very detailed over here so for example you can see uh, install install command line upgrade command line uninstall command line etc etc right all those details are available package parameters are detailed detailed uh, over here right and um, update modes are detailed over here so winget um, run um, website is not yet there but i'm sure it will be we will reach uh, reach there um, uh, soon pretty soon so I think uh, that was the quick one from my side. Uh, um, Joy, back to you. Tap into the Winget repository, so it has access to both. Working with Microsoft Intune. So what Microsoft has now done is, if we remember the old store experience with Microsoft Intune, then the old store was something like that had a private application space, which is the Microsoft Store for Business, which is something equal to Google, uh, like the Google Play Store and the Google Play for Work Store, the private apps section like a thing. So there was the Store for Business, which we need to go and integrate. So there was a connector in between and then whatever apps we used to add to the pub 
to the private store used to sync back with Microsoft Intune. And from there we could have deployed. <coughs> uh, now there is no connector required to get or tap into the sources of Winget because what Microsoft has done is they have directly built Windows Package Manager service or they have integrated this Windows Package Manager service with the Intune the independent software vendor repositories that are currently listed with Winget as well as the MS Store applications. So as an admin, if we now want to create an application, we can easily do that with Intune uh, without the requirement of doing repackaging for many of the apps that are currently available. So like Adobe Acrobat is something which is already available with Winget. We don't need to do a Win32 repackaging for that to deploy it from Intune as a Win32 app. We can do it as a store app now. So things like that. And obviously, like once an application is created in Intune, there are two ways we can deploy it. We can either deploy it as a direct uh, or a required install, uh, or we can make it available for the end user to go into the company portal and do a self install of that application. Uh, this is basically. Uh, how now the application looks like. So again, I will ask Anup sir to do a quick demo of this. Okay, cool. Um, so I, yeah. I I can see some hands raised, but uh, we will cover the we will cover the questions uh, question and answers in the last part of the session, if that's okay. Uh, is that is that fine, Joy? Yep, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. OK, so let's let me let me share my screen again. OK, hopefully this is the correct screen. That I'm sharing. OK, so this is Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. No, uh, that's that that branding is changed, but um, yeah, we are a year. The name still continues. Three. Yeah, <laughs> OK. Um, so we are we are in Intune Intune portal, and then you you can see I have filtered on application and then Windows. Okay, and if I click on Add button over here, you will see a lot of options uh, to deploy Windows applications. Um, okay, Windows applications or um, deploy applications to Windows devices, right? So the, the, there are two options: store apps options. Available one is legacy. That is the one which um, Joy talked about, and uh, the the old one. And uh, this is the this is the latest one uh, which Joy mentioned in the uh, schema diagram, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Uh, so this is this is what integrated directly with uh, Windows Package Manager, etc. So I'm going to show you this one, Windows Store App New, and I'm going to select, click on select. And then um, the, here is the option to select Microsoft Store app. OK, so I'm clicking on that hyperlink and then um, I'm going to check my favorite app. That's WhatsApp again. OK, um, see all the all these WhatsApp applications are UWP application. So this is this is interesting and um, you can uh, for just just to confirm. I can just <clears throat> check for 7-zip application as well. Okay, 7-zip application. Uh, you can see 7-zip application. Uh, two, uh, one 7-zip and another one is 9-zip. I don't know what does that mean. Okay, what does that application is? But anyways, now this is Win32 application and this is UWP application. 7-zip, I'm uh, sorry, 9-zip is UWP application and 7-zip uh, 22 and the publisher is a bit different. I don't know, uh, repackagerexpress.com. I don't know what does that. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's try to, let's try to, um, uh, try to create one for a Win32 application um, for a change. Uh, today morning I found that uh, this is this is already in place. The you can you can already create um, Win32 application from the Microsoft Store. So um, all all these things are automatically populated, so we don't need to do anything. Okay, and still the package identifier is similar to the Microsoft Store one. Okay, that's fine. 
um and you can see um, all the all the all the metadata is populated if okay can you mute yourself if you are okay thank you uh, so click on next um and click on um scope tags i'm not going to cover scope tags etc cetera, etc cetera. and deployment i'm not going to cover because i just wanted to create uh, an application and see whether it is getting created or not okay and let's create it and remember this is win32 application okay and the win32 application got created and it says win32 application in microsoft store new are currently in preview this is this is preview version okay so there are a lot of uh, changes or development expected in this particular version now i i quickly wanted to share uh, give me a sec share the uwb uh, uh, application experience as well so select the same same thing whatsapp what's up okay if i can spell it correctly what's up like see this is this is um uwp application as you can see over here installer type is uwp and you can click next everything is metadata is automatically populated so that is very helpful as as joy mentioned we don't need to go through that um win32 packaging experience in tune win packaging experience etc etc right so next next and create so yeah that's it um i'm that was the quick um, a demo from my side um, over to you joy so as more and more win32 applications become available with this new store <clears throat> what basically helps us is that um, we will not need to find out the install command the uninstall command and sort out the detection mechanism because most of the time the problem with win32 application comes with the detection mechanism application not detected post successful install and things like that so this helps us in a lot of way but i will quickly share my screen once more because i just want to show one more scenario here with the winget if uh, we all remember uh, with the old store or the old process we had uh, something of a configuration that only allowed us to prevent users from using the public application the public ms store so users were limited to the private store only so there's a settings in settings catalog or we could also do it from the template uh, the old type of configuration and what it does in Windows 11 is that if you try, so I have that policy applied on my current test device and if if I try to open the MS store, you will see the Microsoft store is blocked. So this is what happens with Windows 11 when that policy is, is in effect, the store is completely blocked. But if, uh, if someone is on Windows 10, then uh, the store is blocked is not shown. The app, user still has access to the private store and the private store only shows the applications that are approved in the Microsoft store for business. It, it does not shows the public catalog. So now in this device you see Microsoft store is blocked. So does that mean the end user cannot get an application installed from Winget? So for that, first we need to understand the sources of Winget. So Winget source list is what shows the current configuration of repositories that Winget is configured with. So if you can see in here, Winget currently by default comes with the MS Store and the Winget repository uh, sources. So now if I try to uh, maybe Winget search uh, Spotify, uh, let's see, it's an app, should be available with uh, the store. So I have, I do have a Spotify available with MS Store source. So if I just copy the ID from here and then type in a command, we can get install uh, that ID. So Anup sir showed a different command line to install with the silent parameters and the ID parameters. 
I am showing the basic uh, command to install directly. <laughs> so if if I do that, uh, we can see that uh, it it is it is coming from the store. It it asks for my consent, like whether I want to install it or not. So just give me consent to it, and it will start uh, uh, a verifying request request package acquisition acquisition failed server error. So it it comes like this. I I think probably I have uh, applied the other policies in here. OK, uh, but I, I will not waste time in here. But basically, if there was no policy to block it, I could have still gone ahead and uh, install the application from store, even though Microsoft Store is actually blocked on the device. Now, what is stopping me from here is uh, three CSPs currently. So this Winget behavior is determined by this particular CSP, desktop app installer CSP. This is what controls the behavior of Winget. It, it's not something that controls the behavior of your store. So from here, uh, this enable additional source, uh, we, we never configure this enable app installer because if, if we configure this enable app installer source, it basically Winget is now integrated into the default application installer of Windows. So if we by chance disable the enable app installer, then no of the applications can be installed on your device. Because the app installer function of the device will be blocked. So we don't do that, but what we want to do is we just want to modify the source of Winget. So maybe we can do this. So enable additional sources. I can if I put it as disabled, then I prevent the user from adding additional sources to Winget. This becomes helpful when private repositories comes into action. So it's not now in there, but later when private repositories are introduced by Microsoft, a user may go and find a repository out there for Winget and then just uh, open the settings of Winget and add that link and get the application from that particular link. So this prevents the user from doing that. And then this particular uh, node enable Microsoft Store source. I can disable that so that Winget does not get the mirror link of store. So only the Winget repository is available. And then there is this enable default source. So if I disable that, uh, the sources that we see in here first, uh, these two sources that comes as a default, both of the sources will go away. So the user will be left with nothing. So the store is blocked. The Winget is blocked. The end user cannot do anything, but this does not mean that Intune will fail. So your app deployments from Intune will still continue because the Intune app service is now integrated with the Windows Package Manager. So all this we are doing from here, like whatever this, this policies we can all understand they are not present in the Intune UI at this moment. So we will need to create uh, OMA URIs like this. So these are basically the policies, the three policies that I have created and prevented on this. So you will need to create a custom OMA URI policies from here. And once you do that is uh, basically what you will find. So once once we do that, you can control the end user behavior, but the admin uh, initiated app installs will still continue. So that was pretty much all from my side at this moment. Okay, cool. Uh, so we are open for questions. Uh, we have five minutes. Um, if you have any questions, uh, Feel free to unmute yourself or put it in the chat.